From 25 September until 29 September 2017, we at the auction house Künke will be holding our autumn auctions in Osnabrück. This time we have a very special collection formed by a history enthusiast. He reconstructed the collection of a businessman from the 18th century in Leipzig. Collections are as unique as the collectors who have assembled them. Just think of how many centuries this has been happening for. Millions of coin collectors have gathered collections and not one of them is identical to another one. After all, every coin collection is a product of the personality and the experiences of the collector who is responsible for it. Therefore, we at the Auction House Künke dedicate this film to all collectors who accumulate their own very special collection with great personal effort and enthusiasm. We do not know a lot about this Georg Heinrich Sander who published a collection of rare and interesting gold and silver coins between 1751 and 1754. He does not even tell us his name in his own publication. We know it from other books that quote him, like for example The Complete Gulden Cabinet, published by Adolf Christoph Weisen in 1780. He writes, Sanders collection is the collection of rare and interesting gold and silver coins, objectively and historically described. Published in Leipzig on commission at Adam Heinrich Holle in 1751, next to two sequels from 1752 and 1754. Their creator is Georg Heinrich Sander, a businessman at Leipzig. It is still beneficial to read his book, at least this is how the history enthusiast felt, who bought it at the beginning of the 1970s. Whilst reading the work, he developed the desire to reconstruct Sander's collection. He gathered 111 of 153 items over more than four decades. We would like to introduce you to a few of them. Sander calls this coin an extremely rare heavy penny from the canton of Solothurn, minted in 1501. Naturally, we would not call it a heavy penny anymore, but we would talk about a guldina or a taler. Sander takes his time to describe this object in great detail. His account is very valuable for us. As Sander uses sources, no one would read anymore today. For the Solo Tuantala, for instance, he uses the well-known Swiss Chronicle, published by Johannes Stumpf in 1548. From this book, he takes a story about a miracle supposedly performed by St. Ursus in Solo in 1530. The saint himself prevented the Catholic Solo citizens from the seduction of a reformed preacher, Sander writes in 1530, concerning their religion and especially after a sermon held by Berthold Halle on 16 January, the relics of the saint are supposed to have done wonders, as to get rid of the preacher, who had already gotten quite far in winning the citizens for the reformation, horrid screams rang out on morning. St. Ursus was sweating. This was immediately deemed a miracle so that the old women said the preacher from Bern with his big paunch had frightened St. Ursus. The preacher Halle was then in mortal danger, but a message by the council sent from Bern to Solothurn could settle the dispute. The preacher Halle, though, who had evaded the trouble, said his goodbyes and went back to Bern, where he came from. This text is more than just an anecdote. It shows us that St. Ursus' contemporaries did not put a random symbol on their coins, but instead they were truly convinced that their saint had the power to come to their aid. And this makes Sanders' text so unbelievably exciting. They give a better understanding of the true meaning of the effigies of the contemporaries of these coins. Of course, this only applies if Sander was using the correct sources. 
From time to time he is seriously mistaken, and sometimes one cannot help but chuckle, like when he argues which Charles is depicted on the golden guldens of Zurich. Charles the Great or Charles the Fat, whom Sander calls the plump. He writes, The city, meaning Zurich, has always had the name Zurich on one side of their coins and Carolus Imperator on the other. But one should not think that the great emperor Carolus is meant, but instead the plump Carolus. After all, no one will deny that this gold golden here does not depict a lean person, but a rather plump one. Sander neither knew that a 15th century sitting figure of Charles the Great decorated the south tower of the great minster of Zurich, nor did he know that this statue shows Charles in the exact same position he has on the gold golden. A very rare Joachim or old committal schlickish triple taler from the year 1520. This is how Georg Heinrich Sander describes this piece. Our history enthusiast did not manage to find a triple taler from 1520, but what Sander wrote about the rarity of the triple taler applies to the double taler as well. Since I have said in the first part of my book, on page 20, that the old committal schlickish talis with Saint Joachim can be found quite often and that one is more likely to find such an old taler rather than a new schlickish taler, the same goes for the old common and once manifold minted committal schlickish talis without a date on them. This one, which has the year 1520 on it, is an exception to that, as it is very rare and even rarer than the committal schlickish taler in the first part of my book. All the more so, since this is a coin of three talers, and one is more likely to see the ones worth one taler than a triple taler like this one. That is correct, and the double taler is extremely rare too. This coin last came on the market in 2001 as part of the Kölmos collection. We do not have the same interests as the numismatists of the 18th century. This is illustrated by this taler from the Count Ignaz of Oettingen Wallerstein from the year 1694. While we would probably ask why there is a flower container on the obverse, the author ignores this and instead describes the coat of arms on the reverse in great detail. Coats of arms were simply more interesting at the time than an image whose Latin motto would explain it all to the viewer anyway. Superiore pendet. It all depends on the superior. The inscription interprets the flowers as a sign that only God's hand can give the people prosperity, just like the watering can of a gardener nourishes the flowers in the flower pot. Try entering the name Augustus the Strong into the German version of Google. It will immediately suggest the word children because this monarch is mostly known for his astonishing 354 children. Georg Heinrich Sander had entirely different associations with Augustus the Strong. Among the many great and admirable deeds of Frederick Augustus, the late glorious king of Poland and elector of Saxony, is mainly the foundation of the most noble and splendid order of the Polish White Eagle, whose magnitude will convey his founder's greatness to later generations. Sander was mistaken here. Only few specialists still know this order today. Augustus the Strong did not go down in history as the founder of his order, but instead he is remembered for his love life in popular culture. The collection of a history enthusiast which will be sold between 26 and 29 September 2017 during the autumn auctions by Künker, is an example for the continuity of coin collecting. Every coin collector can be proud to be part of a century-old tradition. In this context, one could turn the phrase from Terentianus Maurus, Habend sua fata libelli, into Habend sua fata nomi 
coins just have their own fate. We at the Auction House Künker happily invite you to our Autumn Auctions of 2017. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any further questions.